Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa and I'm a self-taught full stack engineer. Today I wanted to go through some advice on what I would do if I was looking for a job. I have people reach out to me on LinkedIn asking if I can help them get a job at my current company or my past company. And while I can't help everyone, I thought I could share what I've done in the past and what I would do in the future if I needed to find a new role. So the first thing that I would do is not look at LinkedIn. While LinkedIn is the top job board, that also makes it the perfect reason not to look at that job board. Everyone who is looking for a job right now is looking there specifically. Another reason is when I went on to LinkedIn to look for a job, what I noticed is when I typed in full stack developer to see the available roles in Stockholm, it was showing me only promoted job postings. And they were not full stack developer jobs. They were different types of roles in software development that I do not have a skill set for. So at this point, I feel that LinkedIn is almost a waste of time because you're only seeing what they're promoting and what they want you to see. So alternatively, what I would do is specifically utilizing AI as much as I could. Job searching is extremely time consuming and mentally taxing. And so if you can prompt AI to find job roles for you, then that's just like one less thing that you manually have to do yourself. This is the prompt I would use for AI to find jobs for me. So let's keep full stack developer. We will also keep junior entry. Let's change Stockholm to Austin. And then we will change Stockholm again to Austin if we want to expand to the surrounding area. Let's copy our prompt and paste it into ChatGPT. Okay, so already we're seeing a lot of full stack developer roles in Austin. We can see that they're all entry level. Most of them are coming from Indeed. So say we didn't want Indeed, then we can say additional requirement, exclude Indeed job board. Let's see what it does now. Okay, as we can see, it is pulling jobs from Glassdoor now instead of Indeed. Maybe we don't like Glassdoor either. We can exclude that. Let's see, we will not prompt as well. Then you can filter those down. And if we take a last look at this junior web developer in Austin, Texas, so we get junior web developer for a company called Victory, and it was posted eight hours ago. One thing that I've done in the past that really helps stand out is to include video on your GitHub projects. Because you're not sure who's going to actually view your GitHub, it could be a tech recruiter who maybe isn't so familiar with code and the different tech stacks, or it could be a tech lead. Because of this, you want to make it in a way that is accessible to anyone and understandable by anyone. A tech recruiter is not going to download your application and run it locally. Maybe a tech lead will, but most likely they themselves will not either because they're very busy. So if you create a video and link it into your GitHub, then you can walk people through your application without them having to download it locally. Now, GitHub charges for this. So what I would suggest is to create a YouTube video and attach the YouTube video into a link inside of the GitHub repository in the README specifically. Recruiters and different hiring people are concerned that you did not write this code yourself. Either you watched a YouTube video and you line for line copied their code and their project, or you asked AI to generate everything for you. When you create a project, you're very knowledgeable about that project, and you're also usually very passionate. And so that comes across when you talk about these things to other people. And when you create a video and you walk people through your project, when you outline, this was the problem that I wanted to solve, this is how I solved it, this is the tech stack that I used, these are some of the issues that I had, this problem specifically, was really challenging. It was the first time that I had done authentication in this way or used a certain tech stack that you were unfamiliar with. And so when you walk through, that comes across and it makes you seem authentic in that the tech recruiter or tech lead will be able to validate that they think that you actually coded and created this project yourself. Because of the market and how kind of oversaturated the market currently is with software developers, I would go a step further and use YouTube to really sell yourself. Tech recruiters have a lot of applications to go through, so make it easier for recruiters to find you and answer questions that they would want to know 
in their first initial interview with you because YouTube automatically will make you marketable. When recruiters search your name, your YouTube page is going to come up. If you think about what would a recruiter want to know in a first initial phone conversation, answer all of those questions in a YouTube video. Make it more personable. Give them a reason to want to reach out to you. I would start by creating an about me video and outlining who I am, what I've worked with, what I would like to work with, the projects that I've worked on. And then I would move on to more kind of commonly asked interview questions, basically giving them all of the information that they need to know up front. And also it makes you more personable. The recruiters will feel more connected to you. They will feel as if they already know you because they've watched a video of you speaking about yourself versus if you just give them your resume and your LinkedIn, you're still just a name. By making it more human centric in a way, you're going to stand out from other people. I think creating the videos would take time and effort, but not everyone is doing that. And in this market, you have to stand out and put yourself out there in a way that other people are not. So the next thing that I would do, and I understand that not everybody will be able to do this simply for financial reasons, I would recommend reaching out to local startups in your area and offering to do either a paid or unpaid internship for three to six months. Startups are always moving fast and they need ambitious people to help build their product. Startups are a great way to learn a lot very quickly. The problem is startups do not always have money. If you can reach out to startups and ask them if they are willing to do a three to six month internship, either paid or unpaid, that will allow you to get your foot in the door, so to speak. So while cold reaching out usually does not work for larger corporations, if you reach out to say a tech recruiter that works at Microsoft, they most likely will not get back to you on LinkedIn. If you reach out to an early stage startup, you have a much higher chance of speaking with someone who can interview you and your chances of becoming hired are much higher. Granted, it may just be an internship, but the main goal is to just get experience. As a junior engineer, the hardest thing is getting your first role. And after you have some experience, it becomes easier. Next thing that I would do is contribute to open source projects, regardless of experience level. For junior engineers, it's really important to get your hands in the code in a large repository. And that's really important because a lot of times with personal projects, they are smaller. While these, if you take like Node or Next.js, these large frameworks, they are much more in depth with a lot of moving pieces and a lot of files. It can be overwhelming when you first get into a large repository. So already having that experience will look really good on your resume. I have also heard of people being hired because they contributed so much to an open source project. Some engineers spend a lot of their free time contributing to open source and companies recognize that. Companies will reach out and offer you a role based on the work that you've put into their open source project. So it's always a great idea to contribute and learn within an open source project. So think about some frameworks or some technologies that you would like to contribute to. Find their GitHub page, go to their issues, and filter labels for good first issue. And that will allow you to find issues that are good for first-time contributors. And lastly, I would network. Now, I've been told that I should network all the way since I was in university. <laughs> While it sounds easy to do, I've never really understood how to do it, but I think I was just overcomplicating it. Really what you want to do is just put yourself where other like-minded people are. For me, I've always felt that networking was quite a big challenge. One, because I'm an introvert, and two, I didn't know where to go to network. But I think it was also me overthinking it because it's quite simple when you think about it. If you want to meet like-minded people. Well, where do people who code and who like technology go? They go to these tech meetups and they go to AWS sponsored events or Google sponsored events, Microsoft sponsored events. It's really important to look for these type of events on say meetup.com. It's much easier when you network to get a referral to a new job. Employee referrals were ranked first among all sourcing alternatives by 82% of employees. 
employers rated employee referrals as the most reliable source for generating quality new hires with 88%. Additionally, 45% of employees obtained through employee referrals stay for more than four years compared to only 25% of workers recruited through job boards. There are also groups like Pi Ladies. Pi Ladies is available all over the world. More specifically, they're very active here in Stockholm. Search for these groups in your local area and find these coding groups or just tech groups that get together. Maybe they have a hackathon. It's a bunch of like-minded people coming together to code and just nerd out together. So those are some of the things that I would do if I was looking for a new role. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, or maybe you have something that's been working well for you, you can leave it down below and help others find their first role or a new role. Unfortunately, this market is just not great, but I think if we come together and we share advice and we help each other out, we will get through this and the market will stabilize. I hope you find the role that you're looking for and I will see you in the next one.